Hey everybody, my name is Dara O'Bear. Welcome back to Maya Mondays. So today what I'm going to be doing is walking you through one of the examples that I recently put together for my XGen webinar. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using XGen to generate some instance geometry across our terrain here. So we're going to be basically getting some archives to come in here in the form of some alien vegetation. And what I want to do is I want to have the ability to paint different color maps and have those different color maps drive which archive is going to get placed in that region of that color. So this is something that XGen can do through the form of expressions. So I'm going to save these expressions out so that you guys can have them. And if you just follow my workflow, you'll basically be able to implement the exact same um, kind of procedure that I'm doing to to go ahead and generate this. So I'd like to thank Michael Todd for helping me out with this. This was something that I asked him about. I said this would be a really cool way to work and he said yeah I think that's true and you know a day later he he sent me some some expressions that he had banged together and uh, it works really really well. So let's go ahead and dive in here. The first thing that we're going to do is go ahead and create a new XGen description on our current selection. So we'll just call this I don't know something like uh, any, any random name and we'll make sure that it's set to be custom archives and we're going to place that using guides. So we'll go ahead and we'll create that. Alright, so with that done, the next thing that we're going to do is go ahead and just bring up the XGen window and we'll go ahead and we'll place a couple guides in our scene that'll give our instance geometry somewhere to go. Just add a few of these guys in there. That looks pretty good. And I'm going to decrease the density. This is always a good idea to make this value really, really low because that way you won't accidentally um, you know, overpopulate your scene with thousands and thousands of instance objects. So then we'll go back to our archive and we're going to load in our underneath the primitive attributes. We're going to load in the archives that we want to begin working with. So we'll just go to the add button. And if we go to our computer and I think I'm working out of this directory here. And we'll just grab a few of these. So we'll grab those guys right there. So what we have now is um, some objects that are come in to Maya and they're going to get instanced across that geometry. And there's three different objects. So they each have an index number 0, 1, and 2. And you can see that the index attribute for the primitive is being driven by just a simple random expression that's using the 0, 1, and 2 to pick from. So what we want to do is we want to actually have something that drives this index attribute based on painted maps. And this is something that isn't kind of built into XGen, but something that can be added to it relatively simply just with a few custom attributes or custom expressions. So what we're going to do is jump over to the expression tab. And the first thing that we want to do is create a new expression that's going to um, hold the texture map. So we're going to go ahead and call this, um, it's not going to be a float, it's going to be a color file because it's going to be a texture map. So we'll just call this a color and map. So this is going to be my attribute color map. So we'll go ahead and we'll create that. And the next thing that we need to do is we need to create a new expression, a second expression in our, in our little expressions tab here that's going to take the color information out of this um, a color map that we're going to paint and turn that you know red green blue value for any given color range into an integer value that then will get driven into that index number. So this is um, going to be done via a float attribute so we're just going to call this one a color and when you're doing this I'm going to save these um, expressions out for you make sure that you um, use the exact same maps because the expressions obviously you're going to be referencing the, the names of these maps so we'll go ahead and we'll make that guy so with that done, we can go ahead and we can load into this um, this float value the kind of tool that has the ability to take color information and turn it into an index number. So we'll go ahead and we'll just click on our expression window. And when you click on the expression window, you'll notice that there's always the ability to save expressions. And, and that's basically what I did. I save these expressions out and they end up going to your, um, your login directory. So documents, xgen and expression. So if you just drop your expressions in that kind of login directory XGen expressions, they're going to show up when you right mouse click or when you click on this window and go to load expression. So you can see that they're right here. So in the A color, we're going to load the A color index colors expression. And really what this is, I'll, I'll open the expression up so you can get a sense of what it's doing here, is it's, it's basically, the first thing that it's doing is it's 
defining a variable, dollar sign $A, and that's equal to this color map, right? So that's how that color map information is getting passed into this guy. And then we're giving it a, a, a tolerance. So the slider gets built for the tolerance. And then we're specifying the different colors that are going to get assigned to the different index values. So color 0 is going to get assigned to index 0, and that's just going to be simply red. Um, index number 1 is going to get color 1 assigned to it, which is going to be green, and then obviously blue, and then black and white. So if you wanted to have more index number, more objects in your scene, other than you know the four that we've had here, you could have you could add your own a color number five is equal to, and then you know just put a random put a random color value inside of there, and you could easily use this to you know you just copy and paste essentially, and that will go ahead and add more more um, control to this. We don't I only built it with four, but it's or five, but it's it's easy to add more. So then after that, um, basically it goes through, and this is the little machine that essentially takes the color map information, and with that color map information, it just sends back a value of 0, 1, or 2, 3, or 4. And that's what that index attribute on the primitive is expecting. So let's go ahead and accept that. That looks good. We'll go over here to our A color map, and we're going to assign to that a quick texture map. So we'll go ahead and say uh, white. That's fine. We'll create that guy out. So when we jump into our texture paint mode, the hardware lighting gets turned off, so we'll hit our 7 key to turn that stuff back on, and we'll just bring up that 3D paint tool, and we'll paint red, you know, maybe over here, and somewhere like over there, we'll jump into this guy, change its color. It's a good idea to also make sure that your brush is set to a solid profile, that's going to make it work a little bit better. So then we'll paint some green information, maybe here, and over here, and maybe back there, and then we'll finish off by painting some some blue, you know, kind of around in this area. So that all looks pretty good. So um, if we go ahead and we save this guy out, what we're doing now is we're converting that UV-based map that we were painting with the standard Maya 3D paint tool into a PTEX texture, which is exactly what we need to do so that XGen can understand it. So the last thing we want to do is jump back to our primitives tab here, and instead of having this random number generator driving that index value, we're going to load one more expression up. So the expression that we're going to load is just um, the primitive index from map. So as soon as we do that, again, we'll have to hit that 7 key one more time. But you can see here, based on these index numbers, and if we increase the, uh, the preview of these guys, You can see, you know, wherever it's blue, we're getting the trees. Wherever it's red, we're getting the little mushroom things. And wherever it's green, we're getting these little weird kind of, uh, I don't know, alien plant things. But it's just a really classic example of how you can use expressions inside of XGen to start to add tools that originally weren't in there. And it's just a, it's a great example. I was really uh, pretty happy that we were able to, to get this working. So thanks again for taking the time to, uh, to look at, Maya Mondays. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. So next week I'll be following up with some of the other things that I showed in my XGen webinar. So I'll be posting um, next week the kind of more introductory um, example that I showed, which is a short fur example or a short hair groom. So thanks again for tuning in, guys. Hopefully you all enjoy this.